Greetings! It is I, Cantus Nara van Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It's time to continue our discussion on Earth Dawn, the role-playing game system. We last left off, we began talking about spells. Today I'm going to be talking about the various statistics of the spells you're going to be casting. Threads. This is an important number because it lists the number of threads that you will need in order to successfully cast a spell. Simple spells will not require you to weave any extra spells. It's already assuming a simple spell has been put perfectly into your spell matrix, and therefore I don't have to weave anything else into it to cast it. It will list zero here. There are some other exceptions with ritual type spells. Ritual type spells will list usually some kind of duration associated with the weaving of said threads that are required for it. You'll need some kind of time related to it. And there might be some limiting factors on the number of threads you can weave too related to this. Now weaving is in fact the weaving difficulty of the spell. This is reflected in two different numbers. The first number represents the difficulty to weave a thread into a pattern. If it says NA here, it's implying that you do not need to weave any threads into a pattern as a result of using this spell. The second one, though, is an important one, too, because this is your reattuning difficulty. I talked about reattuning in a previous episode. This is where you find the difficulty for doing so. Now your spell may list a range. This range can be put in yards or hexes. This is the maximum amount of distance that, of course, you can use your spell at. It could also list self, which implies this spell can only be used on yourself, or touch. Touch implying you have to touch somebody or something in order to cast a spell on it. The touch might require some other kind of additional test in order to be successful. So effectively, if I'm casting a touch spell, not only do I have to succeed on my spell casting test, I have to successfully touch the target of whatever I'm casting this spell on for this spell to successfully resolve. A spell could have a duration. Duration is traditionally amount of numbers, which usually is measuring it in combat rounds. It can also, though, measure it for hours, weeks, or some other measurement of time. More likely, it will have some kind of formula for this for the duration based upon the word rank. Rank is implying your spellcasting rank. So we'd look to that to determine the amount of time based upon, of course, the duration of the spell that it would last. Now, once cast, a spell lasts for its entire duration, regardless if the caster is killed or goes unconscious. Some spells have a duration of concentration, which means they last as long as you concentrate them. I did talk about concentration previously. And unless it specifically notes, under the spell, any spell that you cast cannot be ended early by the magician that cast it. They have to wait out the entire duration of it. A spell will list if you have the exception of you can do that, but only under that spell then. Otherwise, you're going to be required to make a dispel check if you want to get rid of it. Now, a spell might have an area effect. What this implies is rather than affecting a single target, is it affecting an area? Usually, unless specifically noted under the spell, you assume that everything within this area is going to be affected with this. You choose a point of origin for this area. From there, it extends out in yards or hexes to an appropriate distance, and then the area is filled with the effects of the spells. This point of origin must be within the range of your spell. So you can put it at the edge of your range and it could totally extend a little bit with area to outside of that range, but this is effectively the center of where your spell is happening. If you use hexes, then you use a central hex and extend out a number of directions equal to the number of hexes in range that it has. For example, if you have a one hex range, you have a central hex where you're choosing your point of origin, and then all six adjacent hexes count as that range of one. So it will affect seven total hexes rather than just seemingly six out from that origin point. Now effect is going to vary from each spell to spell, but it will give you an amount of numbers which will be equal to your effect test, a test that you're going to make to get an effect number. This is a general number that you're going to use for a variety of the effects within the spell. If it ever is calling for an effect number, this is how you're basically determined, or some kind of predetermined number for the spell. 
Traditionally, this is going to be using ranks related to you, steps related to your character. That's what you're going to be assuming. You don't assume that you're going to use another one's ranks. This can also be used to determine if a spell has success or failure through the use of effect test. The effect test can actually have you roll against a difficulty to see if it has success or failure. This more often times would be then the spell defense of the target, though other numbers could be determined based upon, of course, the spell itself. If a magician has will force, they're able to add their will force to their effect step when determining the final number, that, the final step that they're going to be rolling in order to find the number here. If there's damage associated with the effect, it will list the type of damage after a slash. Now, unless noted under a spell, it is going to be assumed that you can only have a maximum number of spells in effect equal to your spell casting rank. And this is the same spell. So whatever my spell casting rank is, I can have, let's say four of the same spell in effect at the same time. That's the maximum number of this spell. Now, unless noted under the spell, only one casting of this spell can affect a single target at a time. The effects of the spells do not stack. Doesn't matter how many times I cast it on them, effects don't stack. Now, the casting difficulty is the number that you're trying to meet with your spell casting test. For most spells, this is the target's spell defense, the TSD, though each spell will individually determine whatever sort of casting difficulty number will be by the spell. Regardless of any kind of modifiers you might be able to apply to yourself, the minimum casting difficulty is always 6. You cannot get any lower on a casting difficulty than 6. Period. If target is ever listed, target does not just only imply any opponents you might be casting a spell on. A target could also someone that would be receiving beneficial effects of a spell, a beneficiary of a helpful spell. So that's it for today. I went over the majority of the statistics of the spells you're going to be casting in Earth Dawn. I went over all the various details that you might be going on, the various difficulties you might be challenging, targeting, range, area of effect, the effect itself, all the various difficulty numbers you'll be facing in order to successfully cast in the first place, things that you might target. In the next episode, I'm going to finish up talking all about these spells with the spell description. The last bit of information that you're going to be receiving about any spell, which will help you determine what that spell does. And from there on, when we're finished up with spells, we're going to move into talking about summoning. If you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave it in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It's just for the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you could always check out my Patreon. Link in the description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.